Zechariah chapter 4. And we're going to begin reading in the first verse. Zechariah chapter 4, in the first verse, the Bible says, And the angel that talked with me came again, and waked me as a man that is wakened out of his sleep, and said unto me, What seest thou? And I said, I have looked, and behold a candlestick all of gold, with a bowl upon the top of it, and his seven lamps thereon, and seven pipes to the seven lamps, which are upon the top thereof, and two olive trees by it, one upon the right side of the, of the bowl, and the other upon the left side thereof. So I answered and spake to the angel that talked with me, saying, What are these, my Lord? And the angel that talked with me answered and said unto me, Knowest not what these be? And I said, No, my Lord. And he answered and spake unto me, saying, This is the word of the Lord unto Zerubbabel, saying, Not by might, nor by power, but by my spirit, saith the Lord of hosts. Who art thou, O great mountain, before Zerubbabel, that thou shalt become a plain, and he shall bring forth the headstone thereof with shoutings, crying, crying, Grace, grace unto it. Moreover, the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, The hands of Zerubbabel have laid the foundation of this house. His hand shall also finish it, and thou shalt know that the Lord of hosts have sent me unto you. Who hath despised the day of small things? Dear Lord, we thank you, and we praise you, and we give you great honor and glory for your word. Lord, we pray that you would bless your word to our hearts this morning, that you'd cause us to understand and know thy truths and look unto it, Lord. We pray that uh, you would open our hearts to your teaching, and we would be faithful to give you the praise and the glory and the honor for it all. For it's in Christ's name we do pray. Amen. Uh, so some not so familiar verses of scripture, and we're really going to look at verse 10 in a moment. For who hath despised the day of small things? Now I believe we live in a day kind of like that, don't you? Is that we don't like small stuff. We like big stuff. We like things that can be seen. We like things that we can be proud of. And as I was studying for this, I thought a little about me and Donna's first little trailer. And my in-laws are the only one, and maybe my brother-in-law, he didn't see it a whole lot. But we was in a trailer park, uh, it's called Nelson Wallace's back then. And the, tra the trailer was 11 feet wide and about 60 foot long. And cut into a kitchen, a living room. Three bedrooms and a bath, so they were very, very small. And two of the bedrooms were so small that the chest of drawers and the closet was built into the walls. And it was, uh, it was a very, very small house. And, but we were happy with it at first. And then we wanted something bigger. That's the nature of man. We want something bigger. Now, 35, 36 years later soon, we're in a double wide that's almost three times as big. You see what I'm saying? We don't like the days of small things. My mom and dad started out in a house that was my, my mama's great aunt's that was two rooms, a living room kitchen combo and a bedroom, and that was it. Outdoor toilet, that's the things they started with. It was a very, very small house. We don't like small things, do we? Now, we live to be in the days of small cars, and uh, me and Bella were looking at cars on Facebook this morning, and she thinks it's funny because my first car was a 72, uh, LTD, 
And that thing was huge. I mean, it was like a land barge. But I don't like small cars. I don't. I, I worry about having an accident in them. I'm a little paranoid because I've seen accidents like that and they're never good. The day of small things. So, what can the Lord use and what can He not use? Well, let me say, first of all, there's not one thing in the universe that God cannot use. He can use anything He chooses anytime that He wishes to use it. Uh, years ago, um, probably, I don't know if any of y'all ever met him, maybe Adam has met, met my cousin Steve. He ended up uh, committing suicide later in his life. But they were from Granite, and he said him and his brother, John, a tornado was coming, and they, they dove into a, a, uh, a culvert. You know how schools were then when tornadoes was coming, they let the children out. I don't know if they were trying to do population reduction or what, but that's what they did to us. But, and they dove under this uh, culvert, and they were fine, but when they got out, the tornado had drove a straw through a light pole that most people think the wind is a small thing. God uses small things for his glory and for his honor. Yeah. And so we see that in the days of Zerubbabel, it was just this way, and we'll look a little bit more at it. Uh, in the first verse, it says, And the angel of the Lord talked with me, uh, talked with me, and the angel that talked with me came again and waked me as a man that is wakened out of his sleep. Now, if any day was the truth of this day, the Lord's churches need to be wakened. They need to look about what's happening around them. And I really do believe we would, lot, we would be a lot less discouraged if we would look at things in the context of Scripture and wake up and see what's happening around us. Listen, we're on a downhill run. And you say, oh, Brother Larry, you're pessimistic. I don't mean the church. I mean our nation. And the nations of this world are on a downhill run. You know what? We need men to cry out and say, the coming of the Lord is nigh. You know what? Good sound doctrine is a whole lot, but five points won't get a soul to glory. We need the gospel <clears throat> preached. If the building was on fire, would you not let me know? Surely you would. You know what, church? The building is on fire, and it was on fire in the days of Zerubbabel. And so he, he told the prophet Zechariah, Zechariah admitted, I was like someone that got woke up. He had to be asleep to get woke up. And said, meaning the angel, and said unto me, what seest thou? Now, you can answer that question for yourself. What do you see? I don't know. I see this morning... A church that's still ticket, sticking to the stuff. What do you see? I see a president that is sad to watch. What do you see? I see an economy that's ticking like a stopwatch. What do you see? Don't you think it's time that we as a people, as a Lord's people, that we need to look about? Now let me say this as you look about. Don't let it discourage you because not only is it a sign of the times, it was predicted. It, was, it, it, was, it is supposed to happen just this way and, and we should... We, we, we should be glad in the sense that it's a sign of the times. And so this was his answer, and he said, I have looked, and behold, a candlestick, all of gold, and a bowl upon the top of it, and the seven lamps thereon, and the seven pipes to the seven lamps, which are upon the top thereof. 
Now, if you know your Bible history, this is the seven lamp, this is the lamp or the candlestick that was in the house of the Lord with the seven, with the seven uh, 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 candles on it that is indicative of the temple. Now, the only problem is, is when did Zerubbabel live? He was some of the first that came back from the Babylonian captivity. There was no temple that existed. It was completely destroyed. The temple of Solomon was gone. So it's a futuristic prediction, at least in that day. He saw the temple returning. Now, if you were a Jew and you saw the temple returning, would that not be glad news? Would that, would that not be an exciting time? The Lord's going to give us a temple again. We're going to have a place to worship. We're going to be able to offer our sacrifices again. In the deepest part of nothing, there was joy. Now, had the temple got built yet? No. Has the Lord Jesus Christ come yet? No. So where, where, where are you at in that? Are you blessed by the little things? Or do you want something bigger? Do you want something greater? Do you want something uh, that, that, that appeals to the flesh? Where are you at spiritually? That is the question. Then he asked him again, what else do you see? So I answered in verse 4, and spake to the angel that talked with me, what are these, my Lord? And he explains the vision uh, uh, to, that Zerubbabel would be coming. Verse 8, Moreover, the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, The hands of Zerubbabel have laid the foundation of this house. His hand shall also finish it. Now, what do we know, if you know the biblical history, what do we know about the second temple. It was not large as the first. Do you know that? It didn't see as many people. It didn't have as much room for the sacrifices. You know, Solomon's temple was very specific. God gave the directions to David to how it was supposed to be. And Solomon followed that to the very T. And now they have something small. Kind of like going, me and Donna going from our double wide back to the, uh, the 11 by 60. Is there really any difference? Was not worship occurring in both? Was not sacrifice occurring in both? There's no difference, right? No difference. And, and, and so we find then that this, even though it wasn't going to be big and glorious and grand, they were extremely happy about it, extremely glad, extremely encouraged in the spirit. Notice another thing. All it said, Zerubbabel is going to be able to lay the foundation. Now, do y'all remember one of the few things on this building we did not do ourselves because we had no knowledge was lay the block? Now, after the block was laid and this, this end down here was unbelievably high across off the ground. Uh, there's backfield back there. So if you ever saw how steep it really was, you'd be blown away. And, and, but you know what? We were excited to see block. <laughs> it was just a small part of the building. Y'all remember we came in, we were looking at it, touching it, and like, oh man, he did a good job. And he gave us a discount. Y'all remember that? Excited about a foundation. Now that's just a small portion of the building. If you remember, after those blocks were laid, it was a year later before we moved into this building. But I was excited, wouldn't you? Foundation was complete. And so in the same way, a lot of times we, we get hung up on what's going to be instead of praising God, what is? 
And that, that, that is the nature of man. He is never satisfied. He is never glad. He always wants more. That is the nature of mankind. Verse 10. Who have despised the day of small things? Now you'll have to answer that yourself. You know, all my life, I've never been in a large church. And that is even using the term loosely. Growing up in the church that I attended, there were one, two, three, four, four elderly couples, me and my sister and my mother, and one other girl. Eleven people. The building was over a hundred years old. Is that a small thing? Here, after Adam and Sarah and the children leave, we're down to one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. Is that a day of small things? Let's be honest, it is, right? Now, I've seen smaller. Mm -hmm. Remember, Brother Jarrett just said it was him and two old ladies at Paris. That's a day of small things, right? But if God predicted it, won't we rejoice in it? Won't we be glad? And, and what I'll have to say is small things is better than no things, <laughs> right? And, and, and so we find all through the history of Bi uh, the Bible that God had used small things to bring glory to himself. Because see, if it's large things, we can say, look at what I did. When it's small things, we can do nothing but glorify God and say, look what God hath done. Amen. How many was on the work crew to build the ark? Eight. Probably four because the women, remember the women here? And they contributed. Remember what they did? They fixed meals for us every Saturday and brought us a good hot meal that we all could eat and enjoy. So I kind of think that that's probably what Mo, I mean, Noah's wife and daughters-in-law did. So you have four men working 125 years to complete the ark. Now, the ark wasn't small, but the group was. Mm -hmm. You ever think about God puts a small group to do great things? That's good, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Because you know, if that is the case, and it is, then you can, you can give the credence only to God. You can give the glory only to Him because it's impossible to give the glory to the small group that did it. That is the day of small things. Now, go with me very quickly, if you will, to uh, uh, Luke chapter 19. Luke 19. And uh, we'll begin reading in the first verse. Luke 19, beginning in the first verse. And Jesus entered and passed through Jericho, and behold, there was a man named Zacchaeus, which was chief among the publican, and he was rich. And he sought to see Jesus, who he was, and, and could not for the press, because he was little of stature. He ran before and climbed up a sycamore tree to see him who was to pass that way. Now, I want you to see, uh, we need that grab hold of what Zacchaeus was. 
One thing we find, he was not a small man in money. The Bible says he was rich. Now apparently, as we'll see in a minute, the, uh, the Lord Jesus thought maybe he got some of it on the sneaky side. But here, regardless how he got it, he was rich. But physically, he was small. Now, as I studied in preparation for this sermon, because you know people have got taller with time. That is one irrefutable thing. And you, eh, but see, here's the thing with the people that think that they that believe in evolution. We've grown to the average almost five inches or six inches since the days of Christ. Me and Donna used to buy bed, antique beds, and you know what we'd always have to do with them? we'd have to redo the side rails because they were too short. And that was in 150 years. So in Zacchaeus' day, the average height was five foot six. And they said Zacchaeus was shorter than that. Some people suggest that Zacchaeus was about four foot eight. That's a short dude. I, I'm 5'9", which, by the way, is the average height of an American male. I don't feel so short anymore. Uh, but if I'm 5'9", someone that four, is 4'8", four would hit me about right here. That's a short little fella, isn't it? The day of small things. Now, what Zacchaeus did was very interesting. He made accommodations for his short height. First of all, I want you to see implanted within Zacchaeus was the desire to see Christ. Now that is not a natural inborn desire. Our natural inborn desire rather is to hate Christ. But we find that Zacchaeus Un, uh, unlike the majority, he wanted to see Christ. He wanted to behold who he was and what he was doing. And, but he had no way. Why? Because he's too short. Small things. So what we find that Zacchaeus did was climb sycamore. Now, some people say the sycamores over in Israel are different than our sycamores. I have no idea. Uh, what the sycamores, I can only go by what they look here. And what's the interesting thing about a sycamore tree? The branches don't start till about uh, 40 feet. Only way you can get up is shinny, shinny, shinny. Right? He made accommodations. Now, it's not my intent to climb sycamore tree. But he so desired that he got over the little things and climbed the tree. Now, you can be crippled by small things, or you can do it to the glory and the honor and the goodness of God. Now, we know that Christ came by, again, being the sovereign God of heaven and in human form, he got right under Zacchaeus and said, Zacchaeus, I will uh, go to thy house and dine with thee. And he slid down. And notice what it says there in verse 6. Have my goods I bestow to the poor, and if I've taken anything wrongly before any man, I'll return him fourfold. Mm -hmm. See, he was saved. That experience changed his life. He went from being a crook to be in compassion, worried about uh, uh, people that had nothing. I want to give something to the poor so they'll have something to eat. That's the day of small things. Now, you can be crippled by small things, and we talked about the size of the church. I don't think it's very, that that's really that small in the modern day. But what about your faith? 
Is it a small thing? Or is it a great thing? What, what does the Bible say that the amount of faith we need? The size of a mustard seed. Now, with that said, we think, oh man, I have that much. Well, I don't know whether you do or not. Peter did. Right? But if we do, you know what? That's enough. <laughs> The day of small things. The things that are tiny. That, that only can be given glory to God because we can do nothing with them in and of ourselves. Why? Because they're small things. They're, they're tiny things. They're things, you know what? They're things that by most would be cast away, would have been thrown out. But God chooses to use. And we don't know exactly what happened to Zacchaeus but we do know this, that the Lord changed his life and he was never quite the same again. Romans 16. By the time Jared teaches on this, y'all will have forgotten. <laughs> Romans 16. Into the, uh, in the very first verse, I commend unto you Phoebe. Now this is our Baptist distinctive when Sarah and Adam find a church to unite with in Florida, I mean, excuse me, y'all don't go to Florida, in Georgia, uh, we will send a letter and we will commend unto that church Adam and Sarah. That, that is the principle of that Baptist distinctive. I commend unto you Phoebe, our sister, which is at a, which is a servant of the church, which is at Centuria. We never know the really the origin of this church. I'm just saying there were churches that were organized and, and began where there's really no history of them having, but we know they had to have come out of the church of Jerusalem. And uh, so we find that they she they are commending her to the church at Rome. She's moving her membership, is how we say it in the modern day. Verse 2, that you receive her in the Lord as becometh saints, and that you assist her in whatsoever business she need of you, for she had been a sufferer of many and of myself also. Greet Priscilla and Aquila, my helpers in Christ's name, who have laid my life down, who have, who for my life laid down their own necks. Now, we're going to digress for that just a moment, and, and that's a service to Christ I'm not sure we understand. Now, as a reminder, they, he met Priscilla and Aquila in the book of Acts, and they were all tent makers. And remember, he shared the gospel with them. They already knew about John's baptism, but they didn't know about Christ. And, and, and he updated them on the ministry of Christ. They were saved, and now they were missionaries. And I said that to say this, would you lay down your neck for me? Would you lay down your neck for your children, for your grandchildren? You think a small person would? I don't know. And, and so we find he, he makes mention and says, you greet them, uh, you encourage them. They've helped me a great deal. My helpers in Christ Jesus, who for my life laid down their own necks unto whom and to whom not only I give thanks, but also the churches of the Gentiles likewise greet the church that is in their house. Now, how small does a church have to be to be in someone's house? Now we've all met in my house. 
We met in Adam's house when they lived in this little house under the bank over here. Y'all remember that? The major part of that house, I know how big it is because I've walked it too many times. It's 28 by 28. And then it has that addition on the end. Y'all remember that? And I was encouraging the Lord that it was one of those times we ran out of gas, go figure, and the whole building smelled like gas. Y'all remember that? And so we knew we couldn't meet here. And Adam says, well, we can go down to our house. And Sarah didn't even cross her eyes or anything. And uh, we went down there and we met in their living room. You know why we were able to do that? We were a small church. We met in my in-law's house. Their living room's not the biggest living room either. Small things. Small things do great things. Small things are used by the Lord every day. So what about, what about you? Are you going to be used of the Lord? Are we, as New Testament Baptist Church, are we going to be used for the Lord? I think so, because he gets great credit and great honor and great glory in the small things, in the little things, in the things where he alone could only be the answer to why the Lord is with him. Now, last but certainly not least, the Gospel of Mark. Mark, uh, excuse me, Matthew, Matthew 24. It, but I'm going to quote the verse to you. In the Gospel of Mark, probably chapter 15, it repeats the same that is given in the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 24. And if you know the Bible and the Gospel of Matthew, what is predicted is the coming of Christ, the second coming of Christ. Now, Matthew has a little bit to add to that. And he says, a short time. Now, if you had a short time, how would that change your perspective? I don't know if you saw my Facebook, and it, 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 it hit me really good, so I shared it on my Facebook, that as you get older, you look, when you have more behind you than you have ahead of you, you look at things differently. In other words, I know relatively my time is short. Now, if you get a terminal diagnosis, you know your time is short, right? The gig's almost up. Have you ever thought about there's nothing you can do in some situations? Mankind hates that, don't they? When we found out Judy was dying, the doctor, I did not really like that man. He gave Judy false hope. But I knew in my heart, I went home and told Don and the children, I said, she's got about six months. She was 43 years old but her time was short. 
You know, when you're 43, you think, man, at least I've got 30 years left. Well, the truth is you just don't know that. So in the day that the Lord Jesus Christ lived, he says the coming of Christ is short. And so here we find ourselves over 2,000 years later. And how much yet and still is the time shorter? I think it would have to be minuscule, don't you? I would have to think that the time clearly was near. And as I said in the beginning of the sermon, look about you. Don't be discouraged, but be aware. Time is short. Now, if I'm not living to the coming of Christ, and my dear son pointed this out to me, the Bible says 70 years and my strength 80, right? So going with 70, I've got 15 years left. That's a short time, ain't it? If he's lived as long as I have, 15 years is like, right? Short time. So how would it define what I did? You know what? Judy made a priority spending time with her grandbabies. Spending time with mother. Can you imagine outliving your children? Mama did. Judy made some priorities. And certainly we should do it. We should as well. The coming of Christ is near. Time is short. The only question is this. What are you going to do about it? Now, you know, sometimes I feel, feel very sorry for Judy. But this is one thing Judy had advantage over me. She knew. Right? She knew. We don't. By and large, we don't. So there's two things, right? The time is short because of your death. Or the time is short by the return of Christ. And either way, time is short. Now, if I said... The basement is fully engulfed and we saw smoke rising from the basement and flames begin to, to lick out of the, the floor right here. You know what? We would know time was short. And I'd be willing to bet every one of us would run out of this building. Because what happens if the fire starts in the basement? You fall into it. Right? Time short, church. What are you going to do with whatever number of days you have left? You short things. I saw this in reading the other night. The days are long and the years are short. There's a lot of truth in that, ain't it? Sometimes I think my eight hours at work will never get done. But then I look back at me and Donna, and it don't seem like really that long ago we had joined hands in front of Brother Roy Marcus Jr., who's now at home to be with the Lord, and said, I do. You know how long that's been? I make my in-laws feel old. Almost 36 years. It seems like yesterday. Time is short. Those of you that are lost, look unto Christ. He will save you. That's right. Cast That's your right. cares upon him, and he will save you. The redeemed that meet with us. Time is short. Don't waste your time. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Don't waste your time on the things this world has to offer. Mm. 
these things will soon, this time shall soon be past. Only the things that you've done for Christ will last. Trust the Lord.